Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Super Sonic JB. And don't you just hate it when a portal to another dimension randomly appears in your room? I can't even use pest spray to get rid of it! Wait, this is shaving cream. I'm not even sure what the actual purpose of this portal is here in the first. Hey, what's up JB? I'm here from another dimension. Get this, four of your worst enemies have teamed up, and I want to take you out and take over the entire world too! My worst enemies have teamed up? Oh no. Do you mean? Yep. Sonic Labyrinth, E.T. the video game, Fireplacing, and Garfield Threat of Space Lasagna have all teamed up, and are going to try and take you out and conquer the entire world. Oh no, what should we do? We'll travel to multiple dimensions, fight our enemies, and awkwardly talk back and forth about our personal lives. That sounds like a lot of work. Can I just talk about Nick Teen's games instead? Well, and fuck you! When I was a kid, one of my all-time favorite TV channels to watch was Nickelodeon. This station had some of the greatest cartoons ever made. He got classics like SpongeBob, Rugrats, Rocco's Modern Life, Barely Odd Parents, Fanboy and Chum Chum. Okay, I lied, that one was horrible. Nickelodeon was one of the definitive cartoon stations alongside Cartoon Network back in the 90s and throughout the 2000s. I watched both stations to death as a kid, and one of my favorite things to watch was the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour on Nickelodeon. It was a crossover between Jimmy Neutron and the Barely Odd Parents, and it involved two main characters switching places and traveling to each other's worlds. It was a massive success and ended up becoming a trilogy. I loved watching all three of these, but as I watched them back in the day, I thought to myself, what if this was a video game? Then THQ released Nicktoons Unite and my wish was granted. Nicktoons Unite was the first installment in the Nicktoons series, and it was a game where four Nickelodeon shows crossed over to stop evil and save their worlds. It was a big success and led to three more video game sequels. Now I loved these games back when I was a kid, and I thought it'd be a fun idea to go back and revisit them to see how well they aged. Are they still any good, or are they as bad as Dinkleberg? Dinkleberg! Anyways, without further ado, let's take a look at the four Nicktoons video games. Console versions only, by the way. The first game we're going to take a look at is Nicktoons Unite for the GameCube and PS2. This was the first game released back in 2005 by the four Nicktoons crossover games. Now back around this time, the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour was airing on TV, and back then, every gamer watching that special was singing the same thing. What if this was a game? Well, have no fear, because Nicktoons Unite is here. This was a crossover game between four Nickelodeon shows. Those being SpongeBob SquarePants, Jimmy Neutron, Fairly Odd Parents, and Danny Phantom. This is a 3D beat em up type of game made by THQ. I played this game a ton back in the day when I was a kid and absolutely loved it. Going from world to world as some of my favorite Nickelodeon characters and fighting against iconic villains from Nick's shows was amazing. Now, why did they only use these four shows in this game? I'd say it's because these four shows were the most relevant and popular ones airing on Nickelodeon at the time. I mean, I doubt any kids would know who Pinwheel is. I'll be honest, I had no idea who he was until making this video, but still, I doubt gamers would be playing this game and say to themselves, WHERE'S PINWHEEL AT?! Anyways, let's go ahead and play the game and see if it still holds up. The game starts off in Bikini Bottom, where Spongebob exits his house and is planning on visiting his friend Patrick. But then he overhears Plankton talking through a speaker, saying that he is now conquering Bikini Bottom. No! <laughs> I love that part. Anyway, SpongeBob freaks out because if Plankton is in charge, he can steal the Krabby Patty secret formula and shut down the Krusty Krab. Again, I repeat. No! But then a portal to another dimension opens up and Goddard the robot dog from Jimmy Neutron appears. He brings up the screen of Jimmy who tells SpongeBob that villains from multiple worlds had teamed up and are now trying to conquer their worlds. So Jimmy asks Spongebob for his help, and Spongebob enters the portal, which leads to Jimmy's lab. Also, check out Gary's face when Spongebob leaves him. He's like, yo, bro, what the heck, man? You just left me all alone as robots are taking over Bikini Bottom. That owner of the year right here, folks. Then the intro to the game plays, and wow, does this intro make me feel nostalgic. It's almost like it's an anime intro. <laughs> Anyway, Spongebob arrives at Jimmy's lab, and this is where the four Nicktoon characters finally meet for the first time. This is the strangest morning I've had since, well, last Tuesday. Wow, he can talk? Yes, Danny, he indeed talks. Maybe too much sometimes. Yeah, so the intro to the game only sees Spongebob getting his world conquered. The other three are just here in Jimmy's lab. They already have a big idea of what's going on. It does kind of suck that we didn't get to see how the other characters react to their worlds falling apart, but maybe it'd get too repetitive if we saw that multiple times, like, Oh no, our world's being conquered! Oh no, our world's being conquered! Brain Blast, our world's being conquered! 
See what I mean? So Jimmy has created a device called the Universe Portal Machine, and it's a device that allows you to travel between different worlds. However, Professor Calamitous has stolen the proven to this device, and has made his own machine that he used to travel to different worlds, and he's teamed up with Plankton, Mr. Crocker, and Vlad Plasmius, and they created an army of robots and attempt to conquer their worlds. And they're even stealing energy from their worlds. So the four Nicktoon characters team up and travel to their worlds to beat up the bad guys and save the day. Also, Cosmo and Wanda are here, and apparently can't use their powers because, uh, Evo has stolen their powers. Also, I love how Jimmy references the two of them as holograms, just like how he does in the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, which means that this takes place right after the events of that. Also, what's up with Danny in this scene? He looks like he's scarred for life. What, did he watch the Velma show or something? Anyways, we decided to start things off by visiting Danny's world, and now we can finally start playing the game. So how the game works is that you can switch between the four different characters, and each one of them has their own unique movesets. SpongeBob can karate chop and throw bubble bombs to blow stuff up. Danny can punch, possess things, and use his ghostly whale. Timmy can shoot stars from long distances and freeze things. And Jimmy can also shoot stuff and can shrink objects. As you play on, you can unlock other cool abilities, like Spongebob can use Doodle Bob to lure enemies to him in this game. How cool is that? Here's the thing about the game's combat though. It's not that great, especially in the beginning. The combat itself isn't really that exciting. It just mainly mash a button a bunch of times and you win. Now yes, you can upgrade a character's movesets, by using tokens to purchase new moves. You can kill enemies to get these tokens, and there's a pretty good amount of moves that you can get. But the combat itself is just so frustrating at times, especially in the beginning. Fighting enemies get super repetitive, and the controls can be kind of annoying to deal with sometimes. You also move so slowly when walking around. Some levels are really big, and trying to get from point A to point B takes forever. Also, Danny and Jimmy are pretty much useless compared to SpongeBob and Timmy. SpongeBob does tons of damage and is also the fastest character in the game, while Timmy excels at ranged combat and he can use his superhero powers to progress through tons of levels. Meanwhile, Danny takes forever to kill a basic enemy and Jimmy's blaster attack is way too slow. Plus, you rarely ever use Danny and Jimmy's abilities in this game. What does Danny even do? Possess a monkey and that's it? <laughs> I wish I could possess a monkey. Now, there's a bunch of enemies you'll come across while playing through this game, but most of them are pretty generic and forgetful. Like, what the heck is this guy supposed to be? Hi, I'm Paul. Some enemies even have these shield things, and wow, can they be annoying to deal with. Lots of enemies can just be so aggravating to deal with, and sometimes you'll be forced to fight an army of enemies in order to move on to another part of the level. And you'll be doing this constantly throughout the game, so have fun. Now, I have been kind of harsh on my thoughts on the game so far, but there's plenty of good things this game has going for it. For one, I thought the level design was pretty good for the most part, aside from a few areas. The game does do a good job of using all four playable characters in a level. I also just love the whole concept of going to all these different worlds and seeing them being taken over from the villains of the series. I mean, this level right here is literally Crocker World from the Fairly Odd Parents movie, and that's just freaking awesome. And even though the story is very simple and straightforward, I still really enjoy it. I mean, back in 2005, you didn't get a ton of video game crossovers, aside from Smash Bros, of course. So having a simple yet charming story was perfectly fine here. We even get to see tons of other characters from the four shows, which is really cool. The voice acting is also really good. All the original voice actors return, which is nice. It's also just really cool seeing our four main characters interact with each other and talk about what their worlds are like. Heck, even these still image cutscenes have their own unique charms to them. The animated cutscenes, while not the best, especially by today's standards, are also full of life, and the facial expressions are great. Timmy in 3D still seems strange, but he still looks better than he did in a Jimmy Timmy Power Hour. I mean, that was my sleep paralysis demon back in the day. Another thing I should talk about are the boss battles. And yeah, they kind of suck. The bosses themselves take way too long to beat, and sometimes it's really tricky to figure out what you're supposed to do in order to damage them. Looking at you, Crocker fight. One of my least favorite fights in this game is this one against the Jellyfish Harvester. This boss moves super fast, and once he vacuums you up, he holds you captive for about five whole seconds, where all you can do is sit there and wait. Now, yeah, that may not sound that big of a deal, but it's nearly impossible to dodge him since he's so quick, and you move so slowly, which means you'll be sucked by him tons of times, and we'll just sit there doing absolutely nothing but taking damage. The bosses had so much potential here, but they just weren't that fun to fight. Another one of the biggest issues I have with this game is the saving system. You can save your game anytime you beat a level, which is fine, but that's the only time you'll really be able to save. Now in each stage, you'll come across Goddard here, who can save your game and will let you upgrade your moveset. But his saving system 
doesn't work properly. If you save using Goddard and exit the game, the next time you play, you think you start from where you left off, right? But no, you start the level all over again. Why? Why doesn't the saving system implemented in this game freaking work? Redoing an entire level you already played through is so annoying. And if you ever die while playing the game, you'll get a game over and will be sent back to the start of a level. Meaning Goddard is completely useless here. All right, that's enough ranting for now. Sorry about that. Anyways, I will say the music in this game isn't that good either. Sometimes there's no music at all in cutscenes, which just feels weird. And when there is music, it sounds so boring and forgetful. All four of these shows have great music, so it's shocking that the game where they all cross over has no memorable music at all. Let me be real with you all. Nicktoons Unite is a unique and interesting game, but my god is it flawed! I love playing this game as a kid, but now that I'm older, I start to see all the issues this game has. The gameplay is so slow and frustrating, and the combat is just not that exciting. This game is in desperate need of a remake, because wow was it such a great idea, but it was executed a bit poorly. If this game ever does get a remake, I'd say they need to improve the gameplay, make new music, and fix the dang saving issues! I doubt we'll ever see a remake of this game though, especially since three of these shows are kinda dead. Yes, I said kind of, because Fairly Odd Parents did get a new reboot AGAIN, but there's no Timmy now. So in the end, I thought Nick Teens Unite was an alright game, but it wasn't as good as I remember it was. The gameplay didn't age very well, but there was still plenty of charm here for the fans of the four shows. Maybe one day this game will get a remake, but it seems like modern game devs would rather remake games like The Last of Us Part 2 over this. Next up, we got Nicktoons Battle for Volcano Island. I hope it's not a boot volcano. Now, I'm only going to be covering the console versions of this game, even though I heavily grew up on a DS version of this game. But the console versions are considered the best versions, so let's check them out. The game starts off on an island where we see some crab people opening up a portal and attempting to summon a group of heroes who can fight against an evil being known as Zamagu. Unfortunately, something goes wrong with the spell they're performing, and this leads to all the heroes being scattered across the island. SpongeBob and Danny end up appearing, and the old crab asks them for their help in saving the island. The two of them agree to help, and then we get to start playing the game. Off the bat, I gotta say, this game control is way better in Nicktoons Unite. The character's movement is so much faster. The combat feels way more responsive, and being able to double jump here is a nice feature. Each character has their own unique moveset, and you'll have to switch between characters in order to get past certain obstacles. You know, the typical Nicktoons gameplay stuff. I bet someone said that line after reviewing this game back in the day. This first stage with SpongeBob and Danny is a great tutorial stage, and it'll teach you a lot about the game's mechanics. Each stage has some collectible items you can come across, and if you collect a certain amount of them, you unlock a bonus level. Here's a pretty good amount of enemies you can fight here too. As you progress through the game story, you unlock other playable characters, like Patrick, Sam, Timmy Turner, but no Jimmy Neutron for some reason. Now yes, Jimmy is in the game, but he's not really a playable character here. He's just a guide. This is a major missed opportunity here. Sure, Jimmy's gameplay wasn't the best in New Teens Unite, but at least he was playable. It gets even worse in the DS version, because he's physically there with the crew, but he's still not playable. The DS version only has three playable characters too, which kinda sucks. But really, not having playable Jimmy here is kind of a disappointment. I mean, who cares about playing as Jimmy when Sam is here? Now, one of the biggest things this game fixes is the saving system. Mainly because saving actually works properly in this game. The game has auto saves now, so if you're playing a level and accidentally break the TV, don't worry, because the next time you start up the game, you'll spawn in at the last save point, rather than restarting the entire level. Thank. Freaking. God. I don't need you anymore, Goddard! The game also has much better level design than the Tuesday Night. It actually has lots of fun platforming sections, and like I said before, the game controls so much better than its predecessor. However, this game is still far from perfect. For one, it's way too short. Like, you'll beat this game about 2-3 hours max. You'd think a big crossover game like this would last long, but no, you'll be done with this game by lunchtime. Another thing that also sucks is the fact that out of all the 6 playable characters here, they pretty much play all exactly the same. Now yes, everyone does have their own unique moveset, but they all play very similarly. They have an attack, a projectile, and can double jump. SpongeBob can cry chop, but oh, Danny can punch, so they're clearly different from each other. In Nicktoons Unite, every character has a certain move that you can use to progress through a level, but here, anyone can do anything. Which is kind of cool, but that makes the character's movesets kind of repetitive. Another thing that also sucks in this game is that you can't pick and choose who you want to play as in a level. You'll only be able to play the set characters of the stage. I think it would have been way cooler if we just got to select our characters right before we start playing a level. 
or have the option to swap characters as you're playing through a level. I mean, you only get to play as Timmy for a small amount of time, which sucks. The bosses are also kind of lame and forgetful. They're super easy and aren't really that fun to fight, but I do at least like their designs. There's also no four-player co-op, which is a pretty big letdown. I mean, if Victus United had it, why not this game have it? Alright, that's enough negativity for now. Let's talk about more things I actually liked in this game. For one, the animations here are so much better than they were in Nicktoons Unite. The characters feel so lively, and the graphics look pretty good too. I mean, Danny no longer stands there awkwardly looking to your soul here, so that's a huge improvement. I also enjoyed the story a lot. Sure, it's simple and pretty straightforward. You're the chosen ones, find your friends, beat the Magu, and save the world. Yeah, it's simple, but enjoyable. The characters' interactions and cutscenes are great, and I also really like the new characters introduced in this game. The wise old hermit crab is a pretty cool character, and he was so much more interesting in this version of the game than a DS version. In that version, he just acted as a guide who just showed up in cutscenes and was like, Yes, chosen ones, you must go and save the world. We need your help at once, chosen ones. Now please, do this input in order to open the gate, and please proceed with caution. You must save the world, chosen ones. Yeah, he sucked in the DS game, but at least he's cool in the console version. The manga himself is also a pretty cool villain, I just wish he got more screen time. The music is also really good. It's nice actually being able to hear music during cutscenes, instead of this awkward silence of what Nick Teens Unite did. Honestly, this game was a huge step up from Nick Teens Unite, and I liked it way more. The gameplay was really fun, the story was pretty good, and the level design was awesome. Sure, the game is way too short, and there's no playable Jimmy Neutron, but still, I had a lot of fun playing through this game. I'd say this one's my personal favorite out of the four Nicktoons games. Is that a spoiler alert? I don't know. Who cares? So yeah, overall, I give Nicktoons Battle for Volcano Island a big thumbs up. But also a thumbs down because no playable Jimmy Neutron! So yeah, that was the Nicktoons Battle for Volcano Island. Like I said, I really enjoyed the game a lot. Up next, we're going to take a look at Nicktoons Attack of the Toy Bots. Now, out of all four of the Nicktoons games, this is the one that I had the least amount of experience with. I never played this game at all up until making this video, so hopefully it's good, but let's find out. Up next, we have Nicktoons Attack of the Toy Bots. Now, like I said earlier, I never played this game up until now, so I'm pretty excited to see what it's like. The game starts off at a game show? Uh, okay then? Is this guy supposed to be discount CGI Steve Harvey or something? So, Professor Calamitous is here on this game show, showing off his latest creations, which is an army of evil toys that look exactly like our favorite Nicktoons characters. He made these evil toys in a really weird way, though. Apparently, he captured some fairies and made them in Krabby Patties, which gave him magic gas, so they farted, and he used this magic gas to power his evil toys, and they're also powered by ghost energy. What on earth is his plan so far? He also uses his evil robots to capture heroes from every dimension and scan them to make the toy models. Yeah, this plan is really over the top, but it's apparently working out really well for him, so that's good for him, I guess. Now, why is he on a game show explaining his evil plan? I have no idea, honestly. I mean, just imagine being invited on a game show and it going like, Welcome to everyone's favorite new game show. Can you believe it? Today we have a special guest, Professor Calamitous, competing today. All right, Professor, let's go ahead and start the game, shall we? <laughs> My evil plan, yes, of course. Let me explain. I'll be conquering the world today by using an evil army of toys and ripping all the souls out of the other Nickelodeon characters. <laughs> Professor, this is a game show. Also, hey, the Magu from Battle of Volcano Island is here too. But he's really only here for a cameo. Also, dang, he's so short now. Anyways, we then jump to Bikini Bottom, where SpongeBob and Patrick are delivering millions of Krabby Patties to a customer. Sheesh, that bill's gonna be really high. And just imagine a tip on top of that. They end up delivering the patties to one of Calamitous' toy factories, and his robot vacuums him up and also captures Patrick in the process. So SpongeBob disguises himself as the robot and heads into the factory to save him. And now we get to start playing the game. This game plays a lot like Battle for Volcano Island. You can double jump, punch and kick, do a projectile, and collect orbs to gain health. The game also has that set camera angle like the other games had. Honestly, I prefer to have a fully functioning 3D camera set behind me, like in most 3D platformers, but oh well. Maybe Glossy Doodle fix that. It didn't. As you play on through the first level with SpongeBob, you'll find Patrick who's been sealed inside a container. And right as you save him, Jack from Tack and the Power of Juju appears and asks for your help in stopping the evil toys. He says Timmy Turner is in danger, so we agree to help and travel through a portal to Timmy's world. Also, this is random, but this line did make me laugh a bit. Nice work! You've earned yourself a big kick, Tack! Two! We mainly find Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda, and get to play the next level of the game, and start searching for other Nicktoons characters. Honestly, the story of this game follows the exact same pattern, rescuing a character, and going to the next factory, all the way to the very end. Which really, got really repetitive. We also meet this guy named Chadbot, 
Wow, what a name, all right? And he agrees to help us in finding our friends, as long as we get him some figurines for his collection. And that about does it for the story. Honestly, I think this game's storyline felt kind of weak. But hey, it did give us some new characters. Dak was introduced here because his new show was running at this point in time, but I've never seen it, so I barely know anything about him as a character. I do know people love speedrunning his video game, though. This game actually has several references to other Nickelodeon characters, like Cat Dog, My Life is a Teenage Robot, heck, even Rocco's Modern Life. Some of them are even playable characters, but lots of them are exclusive to certain versions of the game. Like, if you want to play as Invader Sim, then you gotta play the DS version. Or if you want to play as Rocco, you gotta play the console version. I honestly hate it when games do this type of thing. I mean, they did this for Spider-Man and Marvel's The Avengers, and you know what that led to? Yep, that's what I thought. These other characters also play no part in the game's story. They're just unlockable characters you can play as, which does kind of suck, but at least you can play as them. As long as you play on a certain platform anyways. The game does allow you to play as any two characters in any stage, which is so nice. Heck, even Jimmy Neutron is playable again here. Heck yeah! Though this time around, Sandy isn't playable. I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> the wall design in this game is pretty good for the most part. Though keep in mind, this game can actually be pretty hard at times. I died many times trying to make tight jumps in many levels, but even still, it's a fun game. When you're not raging anyways. Now I played the Wii version of this game, and while I didn't have an issue with the motion controls, one thing I didn't like is using the D-pad attack. This felt so awkward, and you can't change the button input, so you're stuck using the D-pad attack the entire time. And when you attack, the characters say the exact same lines over and over again, to the point where it gets really annoying. Also, sometimes the double jump just doesn't work right. Especially in this one kind of unfair rising platform sections. Good god, that was awful. You get like no height from jumps here, and the platforms break, so you die so easily. There's also no boss battles in this game at all, which really sucks. Sure, the other game's boss battles weren't the best, but at least they existed. Heck, Calamus himself barely even interacts with the heroes, which sucks. Sponge booby. Ha! <laughs> he just said sponge. Yeah, this game does have some side missions, like this one where your tongue surfaced Spongebob, like you did in Battle for Bikini Bottom. This was cool, but it didn't control the best. Then there's these Danny mech missions, and oh dear god, these are the worst. Here you walk around in Amity Park in a mech, and shoot toy bots. It controls like crap, and it's super slow. There's also some collectibles you can get, like these blueprints of Nickelodeon characters. Holy crap, is that the cow voice by Paul Blart? There's also these fairy canisters in the levels, and there's 500 in total here. But I never tried to get them all, because I doubt it's really worth it anyways. You can also purchase costumes wear, which is a pretty cool feature. The music is also really good. I'd say this game has the best soundtrack in the entire collection of Nicktoons games. Oh, fun fact, the dude who composed this game's soundtrack went on to make Doom music. Imagine making a Spider-Man song, then making a Doom song back to back. That's insane. There's also no co-op here, but I kind of understand why it wasn't featured. Because imagine trying to get through this shit with multiple players. That'd be worse than any Carl X3D fanfictions out there. Okay, maybe it wouldn't be that bad. Oh, Judy. So, what are my overall thoughts on this game? Well, I thought it was a decent game overall, but there's so many things I hated about this game. The story's awful, the mission level is controlled poorly, and the console exclusive characters was such a bad idea! The game's ending was also so boring and anticlimactic that it kind of felt rushed. I did enjoy the gameplay and music, and love choosing my characters in the level, but in the end, I just say this game was just alright. Alright, so that was Nicktoons Attack of the Toy Bots. And like I said, it's a fun game and all, but it is pretty flawed. Alright, so we have one more game to check out here today. Nicktoons Gloves of Doom. This is the last game in a Nicktoons 4-pack, so let's check it out and see if it's any good. So last but certainly not least, we have Nicktoons Gloves of Doom. Or, sorry, SpongeBob SquarePants featuring Nicktoons Gloves of Doom. Yeah, at this point in the series, the devs made SpongeBob the center of attention. Now yes, he's always been a main character, but now he's completely taken over the series. Maybe he was the true villain all along. Anyways, the game starts off in space, where we see some asteroids falling down to Earth. Then we fast forward to Bikini Bottom, where SpongeBob and Squidward are walking to work. And wow, the graphics here actually look pretty good! Then out of nowhere, this alien group set falls from the sky and lands right on Squidward, turning him into an evil alien-looking creature. SpongeBob runs away and meets up with Patrick, and the two of them watch as Bikini Bottom is being overrun by glob monsters. 
And right as Evil Squirtle is about to catch up to them, we see Jimmy Neutron come out of a random portal, and he asks them to come with him to Volcano Island. That's the name of the second game! Also, oh dear god, Jimmy looks so terrifying here! Sodium chloride! Anyways, we head inside the portal, and arrive at the Mogu's Lair from the second game. We meet up with the other Nicktoons characters, who have also had their worlds being attacked by these glob creatures. But then a bunch of villains appear, and they want to join forces with the heroes to save their worlds. Heck, even Invader Zim and Dib are here. Good to see they're not console exclusives. Also, beautiful gorgeous as a villain for Jimmy this time around? Uh, well why though? Why her of all the Jimmy Neutron villains out there? Were they just tired of Professor Calamitous? She also looks really weird in this game's art style. Like, HOLY CRAP! By the way, Beautiful Gorgeous is Professor Calamitous' daughter, and according to Jimmy Neutron lore, Professor Calamitous cannot finish anything. So how the heck did he make a daughter if he can't finish? Don't you ever just think about that sometimes? I can't be the only one, right? Also, sadly, there's no Timmy Turner or Fairly Odd Parent stuff in this game. Which sucks so much! So anyways, these glob creatures are called Morphoids, and the villains have been tracking them down. Also, the crap in the second game appears, but he really doesn't do much here. Jimmy then uses this machine using Magu technology to create weapons for all the heroes and villains. Also, beautiful gorgeous hits on Tack during the scene, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. So, what do you do when you're not being a hero? On my off time, I practice the ancient art of juju. Anyways, our heroes and villains get their weapons, and now we get to walk around the hub and enter some portals that lead to Nicktoons worlds. You'll start things off in Bikini Bottom, and as you play on, you unlock four other worlds where you play two lulls and take on a boss in each one. Except Tax World for some reason. Before you even start a level, you'll play one of these slide levels, which I return yet again. This time the control is way better, but the design of these slide levels doesn't look nearly as good as the one in Toybots. In the main gameplay, you travel through a level, shoot your weapons to kill enemies, do some basic platforming, and pick up stuff to refill your ammo. I played the Wii version and controlled pretty well. Thank god you don't have to use a D-pad to attack now. It also had some pretty fun and creative boss fights that I liked a lot. It even had some fully 3D sections where you could freely move the camera around, which was great! But the biggest issue I have with this game is how boring the levels are. There is not much happening here in these levels. Most of the time you'll just run forward, shoot a few enemies, do some boring platforming, and repeat several times. It's just not that exciting and the enemies themselves aren't even that cool. There's so few enemy types in the game too, and they all look so similar. Now some enemies can be pretty hard to take down, which does make things more exciting at least, but even still, the game is pretty boring most of the time. At least some of the game's story is pretty interesting. Seeing other Nickelodeon characters get possessed by the Morphids was kind of freaky, but also really cool. Plus the characters' interactions in this game were so funny, and some of the best I've seen in the series. I also liked the music a lot. Really the only Nicktoons game with a poor soundtrack was Unite, and that game barely had any music at all. One thing that doesn't return though is the ability to put characters in the stage, which is so aggravating! Attacking the Toybots did this to perfection, but for some reason, the devs decided to go back to Volcano Island's character specific stages. Some characters you barely ever even play as. I mean, I don't even remember a Timmy level at all! Oh. Wait a minute. Now this game also has a lot of bugs and glitches. Sometimes cutscenes won't load things correctly, sometimes you'll clip through certain stuff, and even though I didn't come across it, apparently the game has a save corruption glitch that will destroy your entire save file, basically ruining all your progress. Gee, how wonderful. So what are my overall thoughts on this game? Well, I thought it was an alright game. I mean, it's got a good story and all, but the gameplay is so boring. The character interactions are great, but the characters themselves are not as cool as the ones from Nicktoons Unite. No Fairly Odd Parents also sucks big time. And this is basically the final game in the series, which really sucked, dude. In the end, Nicktoons Action Platformer game series was pretty fun, but they all had a lot of flaws. Nicktoons Unite was such a great idea, but my gosh, was it hard to play through. Battle for Volcano Island was awesome, but the game was way too short. Toybots had great gameplay, but the story itself was lacking. And Globs of Doom's gameplay were just way too boring. Even still though, I found some enjoyment in these games. I don't know, maybe it's just nostalgia or something, but still, these games hold a special place in my heart. Maybe someday we'll get a new Nick Deems game, but I highly doubt it anymore. Nickelodeon is not the same anyways. So yeah, those are the four Nick Deems games. And like I said earlier, I thought they were fun, but they definitely had a lot of issues. It's funny, we're still getting Nickelodeon games to this day, but none of them are action adventure platformers like what the Nicktoons series was. Honestly, I kind of miss the action adventure platformer games. I hope someday Nicktoons Unite gets a remake, but I highly doubt it'll ever happen. At least there's no more random portals opening up in my room. 
Oh god dang it, not again, just end the video now.